I first learned of the sharks of Clipperton Island while working at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography Archives in La Jolla, California, organizing the Conrad Limbaugh papers, sorting through the letters, logs, manuscripts, and images of that diving pioneer. Connie Limbaugh was the first diving officer at Scripps back in the 1950s. He pioneered research diving, diving instruction, and underwater imaging. He died in a cave diving accident in France in 1960. In death, he became a diving legend, but it's his life that interests me and his trips to Clipperton. So when Captain Mike Lever of the Nautilus Explorer offered me the chance to retrace Connie's visits to Clipperton as part of an exploratory diving expedition, I jumped at it. Together with a group of diving scientists and explorers from Mexico and the U.S., we set off from Cabo San Lucas for Clipperton Island and arrived at the remote uninhabited island at sunrise on April 15, 2007. Once we arrived, Captain Lever and his skilled crew set about circumnavigating the island, pinpointing possible dive sites. As we prepared to dive the reefs surrounding Clipperton, we were completely uncertain as to what we would encounter. And what we saw both amazed us and caused us great concern. Conrad Limbaugh made two Scripps expeditions to Clipperton in the 1950s. The first expedition in 1956, he found the sharks so numerous and aggressive, they had to cut short their diving. When he returned in 1958 as the leader of that Scripps expedition, he was much better prepared. He'd built shark cages. In this 1958 San Diego KFMB news footage, expedition members board the Spencer Baird, docked in San Diego, and headed for Clipperton. The great Roger Revelle, one of the first scientists to investigate global warming, sees them off. Among the scientists, a young woman, Marie-Hélène Sachet. And here, Limbaugh with one of the shark cages on deck and at Clipperton. Limbaugh also built a smaller cage that a diver could swim around with. These are images of that cage in use at Clipperton. In part from his experiences with sharks at Clipperton Island, Limbaugh became a noted authority on shark behavior. Now, some 50 years later, we descended to dive the reefs of Clipperton Island. We found the coral, while limited in number of species, to be abundant and healthy. The reefs teemed with small and medium-sized fishes, including the beautiful endemic Clipperton angelfish, named in honor of Conrad Limbaugh. Free-swimming moray eels were numerous and often behaved boldly toward the divers. Noted nudibranch scientist Alicia Hermosillo found several species of colorful nudibranchs. And coral researcher Pedro Medina Rosas studied the corals, while malacologist Kirsty Kaiser assessed the mollusks. Marine explorer and scientist Jeff Bozanik spent countless hours underwater each day assessing the marine life. But what we didn't see were many sharks. Over the five full days of diving the reefs all around the island, we saw only a handful of sharks. And those tended to be smaller and wary, like these silver chips. Or, as seen in this footage by dive explorer Roberto Chavez Arce, in deeper water, like these hammerheads. What we did see covering the reefs was longline. Longline used for commercial fishing. It crisscrossed the coral reefs nearly everywhere we dove. While we cannot say for certain that the lack of sharks in these waters is the direct result of overfishing by longliners and others, it is very likely that the fishing pressure has taken its toll. And with no protection or enforcement, these waters are particularly vulnerable to overfishing. We came away from Clipperton with a new appreciation for this wild and beautiful place, and a concern that if these waters are not protected, we will lose this treasure forever.